Hi, everybody. Welcome back to another day in the life. My name is Sam. My name is Kat. And today we're here with Dina. Dina, do you mind introducing yourself a little and um, talk about your internship for the past summer? Sure. So obviously I'm Dina. I grew up in Wasaga, moved to Toronto when I was eight, been here ever since. Um, always knew business was like what I was going to be ending up in, but didn't find out about banking until second year. So that's what my last internship was this past summer. I was an investment making intern at CIBC in their uh, world markets. Awesome. Thanks so much, Dina. So can you start off with telling us a bit about what you actually did as an investment banking intern? So like what duties you would have as an intern compared to some of the full-time people you worked with? Mm -hmm. So this summer was obviously different because it was all online and there's never been an online investment banking internship. Compared to the analysts, uh, by the end of the summer, like you should be operating as a full-time analyst and that's what they tell you going into it. But in the beginning of the summer, it was a lot of like company overview. You do a lot of cap tables, like capitalization tables, where you analyze the company's debt and equity structure. Uh, and then market research, some like industry research, and then a lot of like hard coding numbers. So like, you'll go through company filings and you'll find like specific figures and you'll update models. You're never really building a model when you're an intern, uh, but you'll help find like specific figures. And then this summer there was a lot of like COVID adjustments or like COVID specific like research. So you'd find if you were in retail, if you're doing a retail sector, because I was in the diversified group. So when I was covering retail, they would ask for like store closures, uh, any COVID measures or like employee safety measures that they were taking. So you'd have to just like go through company websites like that. So uh, when people say it's manual, like it's, it's very manual. You're just kind of looking for information uh, that might not actually exist and you just do your best. But that's what summer was like. So it started out, you're a little bit babied then you had your trainings. And then by the end of the summer, you're just doing this research. Like one of the managing directors will like contact you directly and just be like, Hey, I need this company overview. I need to know like what happened in this like IPO. So like write a, like make a two slide presentation about what happened and they'll send you a couple of um, like templates or past ones that were done and then you use that as a reference and then you just like, find information and, and do that. So that's what the summer was like. Yeah, that sounds very hectic. I love it. <laughs> um, uh, could you describe the nature of the job? I know you mentioned some like technical things, but um, overall, was it analytical or a little bit more on the mechanical side? It's not like you're a quant analyst and if you're an m a uh it's a little bit different because you're doing more of the modeling but if you're in a coverage group it's more qualitative but even the qualitative stuff like you need to do analysis so i was doing like the most quantitative thing i was doing was probably like regressions so you'll see you'll have like two multiples and you'll re regress them against each other to see how correlated they are and it's not very mathematical it's most of the math you're doing it's like multiplication and division or addition and subtraction. It's just understanding like why you do those things. So yeah, I don't know. It's a bit, it's a bit of a, a jumble. Awesome. Cool. So can you tell us a bit about how you start your morning? So I know that investment banking, usually the days are very different day to day. Mm -hmm. Was there something that you would start your morning off every day, some sort of report or maybe some sort of research that you do just to get the day started? Because of the summer, because you're at home all the time, you're never really leaving the office because your office is like where you sleep. My hours uh, were usually like 8.30 or nine until whenever like you could go to sleep. Uh, so I think my earliest day, I, I logged off at like 11. And then my latest day was like around 4 a.m. And there was like an early morning the next day. So you go to bed at four, you wake up at six, and then you like do a bunch of stuff because you just don't want to be late because you're also trying to impress people during the summer. So you maybe work a little bit harder than you would have in the office because if it's slow on a Friday at seven, they'll probably just send you home. But if it's slow on a Friday at seven, like you'll just have an off period if nobody's doing anything. But then at 10 PM, if something comes in, which is rare that somebody will ask you to do something at 10 PM on a Friday, if you've been slow before, but it's happened. My mornings, if I was like really motivated and like I had slept the night before, then I'd wake up early and like go on my spin bike, which is like behind me and my bed is right here. So I like wake up, if I woke up late, then I would just sit right here and start work. Or I would go from bed to bike, to shower, to desk. So everything was within 
this space. It's a different summer. It's very different when you're only working from home in this kind of environment and in this position because you never really leave work and because it's such long hours anyways. And because it's so volatile, it's like even more volatile because you're just always available. So. Yeah, it's just like a bajillion times. I don't know, and I feel like it will be just a bajillion times harder with COVID. It's just because you can't really separate home with the work and it, everything kind of just gets smushed together. Mm -hmm. so it's actually really nice that you were able to like say, okay, I'm going to get on this bike and I'm actually going to handle all that. Yeah, and it's not like you end at like five o'clock every day. Right, yeah. it's, it's just... Exactly you don't have that separation, um, but you learn a lot. So. <laughs> um, going off of all that, um, it sounds super stressful. How do you handle the stress and what do you do to not get super duper overwhelmed? One mistake that I made in the beginning of the summer was taking on too much work because again, like you're trying to impress people. You don't want to say no to anything, especially in your first few weeks. But then because it was so busy and because you don't really know how long things take at the start, uh, I had like way too much on my plate and it was like super stressful. So one thing that you do to like, manage your stress in that way is just make sure you don't take on so much work that you become stressed, try to sleep and try to talk to people, like talk to your friends and exercise, and have like, your like, me time in the morning. So even if it's like 20 minutes to have breakfast and you just like sit there and you don't look at your phone. Since your hours are very long, is it a constant flow of work that you have? Or is it like you're working from say nine to 12, then you have an hour to uh, maybe a slow period where you don't necessarily need to be on, so that's some you time, or mm -hmm. are you just constantly working? No, you're not constantly working. And there are even a couple days that were like pretty slow and you kind of just, you catch up on your emails or you read through the news and make sure you're up to date on what's happening with the files that you're working on. Uh, and it's notoriously volatile so you'll have like one week you'll have like five things that are due and then the next week it'll be just kind of catching up but you don't you can't really plan ahead because everything happens at the last minute so there's this one file I think on Tuesday like we got it on Thursday we thought we were going to be part of their IPO and then on Friday we had spoken with the CEO and then over the weekend we were doing stuff and then on Monday we hadn't heard back on Tuesday we hadn't heard back and then there was nothing that entire week for that file things will just get busy or MDs will like be home and then be like wondering about certain files so they'll just ask for some more work so that's very volatile you can't super plan ahead but you can do your best to not get overwhelmed all of that yeah very super duper intense so um what is something that you really liked about the job one thing I really liked about the summer is that everybody just did their best. Like it's nobody's done this before with working from home, the entire team. So like the MDs would call us, there are four of us uh, summer interns this year. The group head, he would call us individually just to check in like every couple of weeks at the beginning of the summer. And the head of capital markets, he had like four calls with us this summer. The juniors, like the analysts and associates were super like nice and welcoming and like would always answer your questions. So you could tell that people were just like doing their best to make you feel welcome and like make you like keep you up to date and help you along because in the office you would just look across the table and ask somebody for help or you'd like mess them on Skype and they'd come over to your computer. But I think the, the culture that I saw this summer was the best part of it. And we still had four in-person socials, which was nice. Mm -hmm. Not everybody got to see their team. The team that I was in like made a really good effort to like see people and connect even if it wasn't in person. Being part of a really good team, something that I've also learned is essential for, especially such a taxing position as investment banking. Mm -hmm. So having heard all of this, can you tell us what some personality traits are that you think are necessary for this sort of a role? You have to be like, confident in your own abilities, but like humble enough to ask for help because if you don't ask for help, like you'll get, you'll just like drown in work. And then obviously you have to be hardworking, but like, I think a lot of people are hardworking and you have to be able to like, function on like not a lot of sleep sometimes and then maintain a good attitude, even if you're overworked and tired. And you'll see that when you're put under pressure, you'll see who actually has a good attitude and who can handle a lot of things at once and who's organized and responsible and ask questions. You can kind of see that in extracurriculars and on resumes, but you don't know it for sure until you're actually tested like that. What is something that you didn't really like about the job? When you have like a lot of like really tedious work, 
I guess, boring. It's like hard to motivate yourself to do that for hours and hours and hours and hours. And then it's hard also to check your work when you start to like space out because it's just the same thing over and over. So that stuff isn't very fun. Could you give us an example of that like boring, tedious mechanical work? Like looking for store closures for like, let's say you have like 20 companies, you have to look at store closures for all of them. You're just looking through news reports for like over and over and over and over. Like there's this one thing, if you have like, I think it's like over 40 precedents and you just have to find all of the numbers manually in all the statements, or sometimes they're not in the statements. So you have to look through news reports um, just to try to find these figures so you can build a precedence table that kind of sucks too. So. <laughs> it's just anything that's really tedious uh, and is like hard to see the value in. Obviously, like you can, you know that it's important, and so you can still like motivate yourself to do it. It's just a little bit more difficult when it's not something that's like, ooh, a company overview that's like a in an industry that you've haven't really looked at before, right? Or like has a cool founder or uh, things like that. And so it's just different. Awesome. So I guess to close things off, what is one last piece of advice you have for someone interested in going into investment banking? Piece of advice is you need to be talking to people. There's no way that I would have gotten my position if I wasn't reaching out to people before. Like I started reaching out in, in second year. Uh, and because it's such a, because you're working such long hours and because of the nature of the job, like it's, really important to like the people that you work with because if somebody doesn't handle pressure well or isn't really a team player, like that sucks, really sucks when you're working on file with them for days and days and days and you're staying up late with them and they just don't have a good attitude. So talking to people to show that you're somebody that is good to work with is the most important thing. And also to figure out if you even want to go into investment banking because a lot of people I think think they want to do investment banking because people talk about it and it's like, I don't know, one of the most like, spoken about uh, jobs for after university, but a lot of people don't like it and they leave after a year or two. So you just have to keep that in mind. Yeah, that's a great piece of advice. And I definitely agree, especially with the last point, investment banking is just a huge thing in business schools. It's almost a buzzword nowadays. So a lot of people just want to do it because that's all but it's really important to actually know what it is going into it and that's kind of what we're trying to do here in life intelligence so um yeah thank you so much dina this was really helpful and we'd like to thank you for being um on life intelligence and hope you have an amazing day awesome thank you guys for having me